Hey everyone, Jeremy here with AE Screens, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you my latest After Effects tool called Get Rekt 2. What this tool allows you to do is create rectangles, track mats, bounding box, pretty much any type of rectangle you'd want in After Effects. So over here is the Rekt 2 panel, and this is kind of a condensed view, but as I make this bigger, you can see we have a lot of options here, and I'm gonna be going over what everything does in this video. So right off the bat, you can just select a layer, hit create, and that's going to create a rectangle that automatically conforms to that layer. So if I move this layer around or change the text, that rectangle is going to conform accordingly. Now, once you create a rectangle, you can change the fill and stroke and stroke width as you might any other shape layer, but you also have this rect appearance effect, and that's going to control a lot of these other things that I'll get to in a little bit. And you also have this rect source. Now, if I wanted to, I could change this to a different layer. I'm gonna move this down and now it's conforming to this hazel layer. I could change this to Margo and it's gonna change to that. It doesn't have to be just text though. You can conform this to any layer you want. Over here, you can change the fill. So I can turn the fill off. And then when I create a rectangle, it's just going to have that stroke. Or with the fill on, I can click this swatch and change this color to whatever I want. I'm just gonna keep it at green for now. You can also turn off the stroke if you want. This is gonna be the stroke width. I'm gonna bump this up to 50. Now, if you hold shift, you can toggle the joints of this. And I'll just get that back to miter. This toggle right here is going to turn on rounded corners. Let me change this back to 10. And I'll bump this up to 50. So now you can see that I have rounded corners. If I hold shift, I can change the style of the corners. So now it's inverted rounded corners. I'm gonna hit shift again, and now it's beveled corners. Hit shift one more time and get it back to rounded corners. Now I'm gonna twirl down on corners, and over here I have this independent corners checkbox. If I turn that on, nothing happens initially, but let's just say I wanted to zero out all of these corners and just, just have the top right corner impacted. Well, I could keyframe this or style it however I want. And down here, I could change that style of the corner itself. So over here, this toggle is going to keep your rectangle dynamic. So that just means it's going to conform to the source layer. If you have this off, then that means it's going to conform to the source layer. But as you start to move it or change the source layer, it's just going to stay locked to that position in time. And you'll notice that over here, we have this rect shape effect instead of the rect source effect. And so that's just telling After Effects where you want each side of that rectangle to be. And you still have access to the rect appearance, so you can do everything you could do before, uh, just the shape itself is not gonna be dynamic. And when this is on, then you can also turn on Use Custom Time. I'm gonna move to the one second mark here, hit Create, and you'll notice that under the Source section, the Use Custom Time is checked on, and this source time is set to one. So by default, this is just gonna be set to wherever your playhead was when you apply this effect. And what this means is if I just go ahead and throw down some keyframes right here on this layer, and then I'll scrub forward a bit and animate this, you can see that that rectangle is no longer conformed to this layer. It's basically just locked at wherever it is at the one second mark. So if I change this at the one second mark, you can see that it is indeed conformed there. Now, a cool trick you can do with this is add a little expression. So just hold option, click source time, and do something like time minus value. And then you can just change this value to something really small, like 0.05. And what that'll do is just offset the timing of the rectangle. So there's a lot of ways you could get clever with using source time. Right here, multi-source is turned on. So what that means is if I select all of these layers, hit create, it's actually just going to create one rectangle. You can see that now I have six rect source effects here. And that means that as I change any of these layers or move any of these layers, it's going to automatically change the size of my rectangle. So if instead I wanted to make a rectangle for each of these, I could turn this off, select all these layers, hit create, and now each one of these layers is going to have their own rectangle. Now by default, use font height is on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, hit create, and now it's just using the actual bounding box of these text layers. But this looks a little funny because on this name, we don't have any descenders. So on here we have the G and here we have the Y, but since we don't have any descenders here, this rectangle is shorter than the rest. So if you're using a lot of different names 
or stuff like this, you probably wanna have this checked on. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this back on, turn these on, and you can see that now these are all consistent. And again, all these effects you can control from the rect appearance effect. All right, moving on, rotation. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle for this layer. I'm gonna rotate this layer a bit, and you can see that as I'm rotating that, the rectangle itself isn't rotating, but it's respecting the rotation of this source layer. So instead, I could turn that off, hit create, and that is just going to ignore the rotation, but still factor in everything else. And lastly, if I turn this on, I could also turn on rotate path. And so when I do that, that means the box itself is going to rotate along with the source. So you can see there's three different ways you can handle rotation, but again, all of these still will conform to the source layer itself, just handle rotation a little bit differently. Down here, this is everything to do with the sides of your rectangle. So let's just say I wanted to create a lower third with these two layers. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on multi-source and turn off the use custom time, hit create. I want this to go to the edge. Well, we'll get to padding in a second, but I don't actually wanna use padding here. I want to use one of these position things. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo, and instead of left being set to auto, I'm just gonna change this to zero. Now when I hit create, it's going to set the left side of this rectangle to zero, and it's actually gonna be a little bit off because of the padding. But basically what this means is that as I change these layers, so maybe I grab both of these and move them around, maybe I wanted to animate them in, uh, that left side is always going to be set there. Now under the rect appearance, under sides, you can turn the auto left back on, or maybe you wanna actually have it be locked to the right. You could do any kind of combination of these, and it's just going to lock that edge to whatever you specify. Now over here, if you wanted to change the setting back to auto, you can just select this, hit delete, and that's going to change it back to auto. So over here, you can adjust the padding. Let's just say I wanted to uh, set it to zero. You can obviously use the constraints to independently change these or constrain them to keep the top and bottom and left and right together. Now when I hit create, you can see that this has zero padding. Of course, because we have the use font height on, it's actually going to appear like there's a little bit of padding. Again, on the rectangle, under the rect appearance effect, we could turn off the use font height and then that will be the true bounding box. Uh, maybe we don't actually want corners here, so that would be the true uh, size of that source. Now over here under animation, these are all toggles, so you can turn these on or off. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on right. And so if I select these layers, hit create, what that's gonna do is create the same rectangle, but now it's going to animate from left to right. If I hit U, I can see those keyframes. So by default, it's just gonna start the animation at the beginning of the layer, and it's gonna be a half second animation. And it's just controlling these effects right here. So this is a right wipe. It's animating from zero to 100%. And of course, I could keyframe or manually adjust these however I want. Now, if I wanted to, I could also toggle on multiple of these. So if I turned on left and right, what that's gonna do is animate it straight from the middle. So this time it's going from 50% to 100% on both of those values. And of course you can add easing or adjust these keyframes however you like. I'm actually gonna turn on all four of these, hit create, and now I have the rectangle essentially growing from the center of the source. Okay, now what if I wanted to track map this to the rectangle but keep this rectangle visible? Go ahead and undo. And this time I'm going to hold shift and press create. And now it's going to do the same thing, but these layers are automatically track matted to this rectangle. And this is cool, except for I have this stroke here. And I'd rather the stroke be on top of this layer, because I think that looks a little funny. So you can select this layer, hit this button, and that's going to create a separate stroke layer, and it's gonna put it on top of your source layers. What's really cool about this is the rectangle is conformed to the sources, but the stroke is conformed to the rectangle. And so what that means is even if we change any of these source layers, that stroke layer is gonna automatically update, but this is still independent from the rectangle itself. So I could move this over, maybe offset it, do something like that, and everything is still gonna work the way you'd expect. What's also cool about this button here is you could actually use this on any shape layer. So let's just say I wanted to make a star and then separate this. Well, now I have the star and the stroke of the star. And I can even go down here and change any of these things. And that stroke is gonna dynamically update as well. So if I wanted to animate this 
path, the easiest way to do that is to add trim paths. And so that's what this button does. It just adds trim path keyframes for you automatically. So based on where your playhead is, it's gonna start there and it's just gonna be a half second animation. All right, let's say you wanted to maybe animate this name. And so I'm gonna add a position keyframe here and I want this to come into this rectangle, but I actually don't want this rectangle to move. Well, I could adjust the source time or an easier option is to bake the shape of the rectangle. So here I can just select this rectangle shape. And if I know these sources aren't gonna change and I just want this locked basically in time, I can just hit this button and now it's going to convert those rect source effects to one rect shape effect. And now this text layer can move in to where it was and it's not gonna affect the shape of the rectangle. And lastly, if you wanted to just get rid of all of these effects, you can bake the shape of the effect with this button. And that's gonna eliminate all expressions and effects. And so if I wanted to, I could grab the pen tool and you know, manually grab these points and start adjusting the rectangle however I want. Now you notice that stroke is still dynamically linked to this. And so I could actually go ahead and bake that stroke as well. And then once I start moving this, the paths of this layer, that stroke is no longer gonna follow it. And this bake path button actually works again with any type of shape layer in After Effects. All right, moving on to track mats. So if I toggle this, it's going to switch it to track mats. And what's cool is all these effects have independent settings. So you notice as I switch these, you can see all these things are changing. And that's nice because typically the way you want to handle track mats is a little different than rectangles and a little different than bounding boxes. So you don't have to manually change these each time. So a track mat is really basically the same thing as a rectangle, except for it's going to be a hidden layer. And that layer is going to be track matted to this. So some cool things you could do with this. Let's say I wanted to actually animate the track mat. Well, I can do that, turn all these on, hit create, and now that track mat is going to scale up. Now we actually would want this to be a circle. And even though this is a rectangle, we can really just bump this corner radius up and that's essentially gonna make it a circle. So now that is going to perfectly grow from the middle. All right, last but not least is bounding boxes. So here we can just select all these layers. And again, this all works very similar to the other effects. Now it's just gonna create, go through and create a bounding box for each layer. And this is again, gonna automatically conform because we have a dynamic toggled on for this. And if we go up here to any one of these, we can see that we have that same rect appearance effect, but we also have this bounding box effect. So what this does is this first one is going to adjust the corner point size. So I'm gonna set this to 30. And then maybe this midpoint size, I actually just wanna hide completely. So I could set that to zero. All right, so then just if you select the layer, you can change the fill or the stroke up here. I'm gonna change the stroke to 10. But then if I turn match point stroke off, now you'll see that the points themselves lose the stroke and you can control that independently by bumping this amount up. Maybe you actually just want this all in one bounding box select any of these layers and it's automatically going to grow the size of the bounding box. So a lot of things you could do with this. Anyway, that is a brief overview of GetRect 2. If you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, take care.